This is a uh, Jay Har, which is a special edition of Amazing Conversations with my friend of over forty years, John Gibbon. John, welcome to the to the Amazing Pod, Conversation Podcast. So let me take it back in, in April, no June of nineteen eighty. The New York Mets selected the first round Daryl Strawberry, outfielder from California, with the twenty third pick Billy Bean, outfielder, with the twenty fourth pick catcher John. Gibbons from San Antonio. Do you remember that day, John? I was you told me I was the first one to speak to you that day that day, right? Oh yeah. And by the way, people that don't know, uh, I went to the same high school as Jerry Grody. A, a real a real I didn't catcher. Realize that. Yeah, but yeah, I was you know, actually I was out the day of the draft, I was out taking batting practice on my field and one of my coaches ran out of the uh, field house and said, Hey, you got a phone call. So I run down there. And sure enough, who's on the phone? You, Jay. I was mumbling something, person. right? <laughs> well, Before I forget, well, newly mumbling. appointed uh, bench coach for the New York Mets, and welcome home, John. Hey, well, Jay, yeah. nobody mumbles more than I do, so uh, well, uh, so I'm not sure if Carlos Mendoza is going to be able to understand a damn word I'm saying this year. But you excited <laughs> to be back home, John? Yeah, Jay. You know what? It, it happened. Uh, it happened so fast. You know, I, I'd, you know, I got cut loose by the uh, Blue Jays back in eighteen, two thousand eighteen. Right. And I wanted to get back on the field, but, you know, things weren't really opening up. You know, it's not something I had to do, but I, I, I had that desire. And then just a few weeks ago, I got a couple of calls from old coaching buddy, buddies of mine saying, hey, you know, the Mets are looking for a guy with experience as a bench coach. Can I give Carlos your number? You know, and uh, that's kind of how it all started. And I didn't know Carlos. I knew he was a uh, bench coach for the Yankees. But I was really impressed. And then, you know, one thing, you know, and then, then I talked to other guys in the organization, David Stearns and, and then some of his assistants. That's kind of how it all came about. You know, it, uh, yeah, I knew when they hired him, they're probably going to be looking for a guy uh, with experience. I thought it was kind of a long shot. I thought, you know, maybe that would be, be a perfect place for me to go back to where it all started. And sure enough, that's how it all uh, – here I am. John, let me show the three cars. So Daryl wound up hitting over 250 home runs, right? Billy Bean had a movie name, Brad Pitt paid him in, in Moneyball. <laughs> so did anybody, is, any, is your life story coming up, John? I mean, he had 11 successful years as a manager, over 500, you know, in a tough division. Who's going to play the John Gibbons story? Well, well, you know, that's funny. I told Bean, I said, for crying out loud, you uh, already used Brad Pitt. He would be more suitable for me than than. than him, you know, uh, he, he should have got Will Farrell or something for uh, uh, Moneyball. But you know what, Jay, I do have a book out if you can believe that or not. But yeah, you know, think funny. about it, you know, with, with Frank Cash, you know, one of the great general managers of all time, yes. would he view this as a success? He had three first round picks, yes. The number one, one of them became a great player, yeah. The next one became a, an executive in the front, the other one became a coach. Now, is that one out well, of three? Listen, considered no, no, a success? You, you, we, you know, 11 years in, in a tough division, uh, over 500. Hey, before I forget, you, what? how long have you been doing your podcast? Just one year, but now it's now I'm, I'm finished with it, now that I'm back on the field. What was the name of the podcast? The Gibby Show. You know, why don't you tell me, you called me, you interviewed my grandson on the podcast. <laughs> oh, Spencer <laughs> Horowitz. And you called me, I say, Jay, is Spencer Horowitz really your grandson? I said, no, Gibby was a joke. And kid, what a great kid he is. He's a great oh. I worked hey, with him been... at the WBC. And, you know, me and my worst sense of humor, usually he spelled Harwitz, H-O-R-O-W-I-T-Z. He spelled it like I do. I said, let's play a game. I tweeted it. You know, I've never been married. So and we got calls from Israel all over the place. His parents bought into it. I can't tell how many people... We got close to over 300,000 views on that tweet. Then I felt bad. I said, you know what? It's kind of a bogus tweet because it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> was, he, was he good with you, Gibby, though? We, 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 oh, we, we, Jay, what a tremendous kid. But, you know, he wishes you really were his grandfather. I know yeah. that. <laughs> I'm on his Wikipedia page now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm, 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 I'm in his Wikipedia page. So let me, let me take it back. Hey, before I forget... Ron Darling, I spoke to Darling the other day, and he said, tell Gibby he screwed up on my first start in 84. That was the first game he started in the season. We, we lost to the Expos 10-0, and you were the catcher. The home, yeah, the home opener. 
No, he had nothing. He said, "Tell Gibby put down all the wrong signs." Well, 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 and you could you could uh, send it back to him. Thank you very much because uh, Gary Carter. Did Gary hit a Gary might have hit a grand slam that day? And so no, that was it, in 80, uh, it was before we got him. It was in eighty four. No, I know it. Yeah, when he was playing for the Expos, and so maybe yeah, that's oh, what forced oh, uh, he, yeah, well, Gary, Gary hit a, a, a Gary hit a grand slam that day. Well, he hit a, he hit a home run. He might have been a grand slam. So that's kind of what forced the Mets to trade for him at the end of '84 and, and uh, cost me a potential uh, job there. So you can you can thank him very much for me too, you oh, know, darling. You know, people don't remember you. So you're number one pick, highly regarded. And it was the last day or two of '84. Joe LaFace said into you in home plate and spring training when he broke your cheekbone. What did, what did he break, John? I forget. Yeah, it was a cheekbone. Yeah, it was like, the, you know, they told me I made the team. You know, I went to spring training that year in 84. I was coming off uh, a good solid year in double A. And the team was looking for a catcher. So I went to spring training. It was me, Ron Hodges, who Ronnie just passed away recently. Yeah, he you know, we, we was up here a little bit. Good guy. Great man. And then Junior Ortiz, Mike Fitzgerald, and Ron Reynolds. We all went to spring training. People remember those names. And they kind of threw the job up for grabs. And uh, Hajo was going to be on the team anyway. But, you know, I had the, I had the best spring. So they told me I made the team. And then uh, it was like two or three days before we broke camp. That you were right, right, we had the spring, yeah. Yeah, we, had, we, had, we were playing the home opener in Cincinnati that year. They always had the first game of the year. Um, yeah, and I was LeFay was on third base. We were playing the Phillies in spring training. It was a, a fly ball to left field. I don't remember who. Maybe Mookie was out there. I don't remember. But he threw he threw a ball. He's he's sack fly. He's trying to score, and the ball was kind of fading into the third baseline. So I went to cut it off, and LeFay ball threw an elbow. He caught me right here. So the inning's over. I'm sitting on the on the bench, and uh, Tom McKenna. You remember the great trainer? Oh, yeah. Tom, yeah. You know, you know what his to fame was? I can't repeat it on the air. <laughs> But he came over. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, he came over, looked at me, and said, "Hey, you got a dent in your face." I said, "Well, I'm not real handsome anyway, but we got to get checked out." It was cracked and pushed it in. So anyway, uh, that was kind of how it all started. And then you hurt your arm a little bit after that, right? I mean, uh, yeah, I, I tore the ligament, partially tore it anyway, not complete tear. And uh, that was that was that was on Mother's Day. My mother finally finally came to watch me play a game, and, and we were playing in Philly. It was cold day. I made a couple throws, and something burned in my arm. So now, now I thank my mother for that one too. Do you do you know what you and Michael Jackson have in common? Well, I, I my only home run was off. That's of- what it is. <laughs> 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 not not the moon fucking one though. I thought you were this. Do you want any of his videos? No, can you believe that, man? I would. That would have been just, just as well as you and uh, Spencer Horowitz, man. Yeah, I, I. You know what? A couple of things I worked on with the Spencer Horowitz. Was the, were you you weren't there when we did Sid Finch, were you? That was one of my. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. That it's was. That, that, I love that. That was great. You could do that yeah. in this day and age. And, uh, did you ever did you ever meet Sid? By I mean, we, we trained in uh, Old Hug and Stangle Field at that point. I remember, I, we, yeah, we were over at St. Pete. No, I did not meet him, but I remember when that whole shtick was going on. Uh, so you make it back in '86. It hit like 500 in a couple of bats. But how much did it mean to you, John, that, that uh, you you caught the bullpen in, in the uh, in the in the postseason? You got a ring. How much did that mean to you that you got yourself a ring? You know. Yeah, Jay. You know what? It, uh, you know, I got to the big leagues fast, and then, and then I didn't play particularly well. So it was kind of it was it was a tough road, right? And uh, and they traded for Gary Carter, who was the best catcher in the game, which you had to do. And so it was just kind of like my my career was stalling out, you know. And then, uh, but in '86, I think it was August first, Gary was playing first base in a game up in New York. There broke his thumb, so I got called right. up. So I stayed with the team for two months, right? And then, of course, that was the big year and. You know, I wasn't on the active roster, but they kept me around during the playoffs to, uh, you know, catch in the bullpen. And, you know, it was. It was a thrill for me. You know, these were the guys that I knew coming up a lot of them through the minor leagues. You know, I, I felt that was a met. You know, I understood the circumstances. Bottom line, I didn't play well enough. But for them to keep me around, you know, it meant the world to me. And, and I got the experience. You know, uh, hey, hey, you are, you are still the most popular guy around. Everybody's calling you. Well, no, I mean, but I mean, it had to be. Do you remember 
much about Mookie's at bat? I mean, are you in the bullpen at, at, at bat in game six? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you remember you remember how down the bullpen we had that plexiglass in, in the – Yes, dirty uh, we had plexiglass. TV. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but you could see what's going on. But as things started developing, they called down and said, I think it was they got Dwight up. And Dwight was down there just in case. This thing, and the, I, I think it was pretty – I'm pretty sure it was him. But the – but all the horses were in the bullpen, you know, the mounted police. They were getting ready to storm the field, you know, to keep the crowd under control, you know, in case the Red Sox won, I think it was, right? Yeah. And so yeah. I can remember I'm down there catching, and my gloves popping with every pitch. And every time it, that you made that loud crack, the horses would jump and they'd turn and look at me, right? I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> but it was the coolest thing, these big old monster workhorses. But so no, I couldn't see what was happening. I would I would catch it, ball, throw it back to the mound, and I kind of try to look up and see if I could see what was going on. But then I, but then I, you, you you could just hear the roar of the crowd, you know, and uh, and I was it was incre- incredible, you know. It, 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 that's it's amazing how that team still lives lives on. It was just John, there was something. I had no hair because of those guys, John. I mean, they, <laughs> I come to the ballpark. I never knew what was going to happen. One day, Mike Tyson shows up to to do. Pre-game stuff and either guy. Yeah, we had so many different personalities on that team. It was, uh, you know, we won 116 games and it was great. Jed, you you manage in our chain, pretty successful. You won a pennant in Kingsport, pennant what at uh, St. Lucie too, and good success at Binghamton. Who I forget who did you manage when you went in our minor league system? Well, when you know it, the uh, the. The one year I was down in Port St. Lucie in Florida State League, you know, we had three of our top prospects. Uh, uh, Preston Wilson, you know, Mookie right. Sun was one of them. Terrence Long, and then uh, Fletcher Bates. So we had the three top outfield prospects, you know, in our system. Uh, you know, they had two, and Ter- Terrence and, and uh, Preston had, went on to have really good careers. You know, Fletch never made it. But, you know, uh, you know, I've, I've had Vance Wilson as a catcher. I had Nelson Figueroa, who's like a media darling, I think, up in New York now. Yeah, he's, he was still, one of my, he's still doing his stuff. Yeah, he's got a, yeah. He's got a, he's got a podcast out, too, you know. You know yeah. And, yeah. You know, and, and, and then you, you, your former roommate, J.P. Ricciardi, gets hooked up with the with Toronto. It's kind of crazy. You had two separate stints, right, with the uh, – that doesn't happen a lot. Like, with 203 to 208 and a time, and then he came back in. That's kind of crazy that it happens like that, huh, John? I mean, yeah. yeah. And l- unless you're unless you're Billy Martin and it had, had yeah, some Billy success. Martin did it four times. <laughs> but how, how, how did it come about? I mean, you, you know, I mean, did you came back again? Well, you know, what, Jay, you know, I I spent my last three years in the Mets organization managing their Triple A team. It was Valentine Bobby was managing the big league club, and they would go through a coach or two a year, right? And usually, if you're you know, you're in AAA and the organization likes you. You know, sooner or later, the AAA manager just kind of slides in, right? But that never happened to me. So, so it kind of it got to the point for family reasons. I said, you know, I, I'm going to go try to get a job closer to home. And I always thought the Oakland A's, Billy Beam, always told me he'd give me a job. But things were going so good there, and they never had the money to add. Let's say, so that fell through. But then JP Ricciardi was Bean's assistant, top assistant with Oakland, and so he's trying to help me find a job because I walked away from the Mets. I said, you know, I got to go somewhere else. Then next thing you know, JP gets the general manager job with the Blue Jays, and he brings me over there as the bullpen catcher. I said, that was my job my whole year in professional baseball, just being the bullpen catcher, warming up pitchers. This is perfect. (laughs) So So eventually he fired Buck Martinez, who was the manager of the Blue Jays. He put me at first base, and then a couple years later he fired the manager and made me the manager. So that's how it all started. And then 2008 – you know, we we were playing in a, in a in a tough division, man, with the Yankees and Red Sox. So we did we 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 weren't very good. So he fired me in 08. Then I went to the Kansas City Royals as their, their bench coach for three years. And the next thing you know, the Blue Jays, uh, you know, they had John Farrell as a manager, and he didn't him and uh, Alex Anthopoulos, the uh, GM, didn't get along. You know, remember Farrell had that his dream job was the Red Sox, and they said, okay, go find your dream go job. Go find your Red Sox. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. and, it, and he ended up winning the World Series. But, uh, but so that's how I was brought back to with Anthopoulos, who's now the uh, running the Atlanta Braves. He brought me back because yeah. he wanted somebody he knew, you know. Um, do, you, do you think the like the Braves? You think they're well, kind of well stocked with her? I mean, they're they're I mean they're young and that's uh, they, they got they, they Alex did a good job doing his thing there with in in, in Atlanta. You, you know. Yeah, you know, you know what though. 
Oh yeah, he's he's really good. You know what though, Jay? You know they got bounced the first the first round last couple it's of years. Crazy, you right? Know, against the Phillies, and then you know that's the division we're in now. Um, and it's like it's like the the Braves won all those divisions. What thirteen in a row or something? Back they have one. They got one title. Yeah, see, so they're used to winning, but they want titles, you know. And they have been they they won that one a couple of years ago, twenty. I was over there actually. I was advanced scout for them back then. And then, uh, but but they they've got they built a powerhouse uh, organization, and that's you know, of course, that's what David Stern's trying to do here, bring this back to. Yeah, we're going to do it the right way. Have you had a chance to speak to Steve Coney at John at all? No, I haven't. But you know, all, I, from the outside looking in, you know. He wants to win. That's the he's bottom a, he's line. He's a fan. Yeah. He wants to win to try to do it the right way, you know. And and he's 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 you know committed to winning. John, in your eleven years as a manager, what what did you ask from your bench coach? What did you want? How how did he want to help you? I mean, what was his uh, your goal with your bench coach? You know, Jay, it's 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 really different with with everybody, depending on um, my guy. You know, I I knew I you. Being an ex catcher, I thought I knew pitching really well, so I kind of I would lock in on that, and I would and I would talk a lot with the pitching coach about that, right? As the game went on, and I might ask a thing or two about the bench coach, but he would kind of keep me abreast of things that were going on, uh, offensive things, maybe pinch running, pinch defense, put defensive replacements in. Uh, just How little many timeouts, just, John. You have on oh, it's different sport. Oh. I, 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 <laughs> hey, no, but hey, we've seen guys get burned. How many times have you been out to the mound in one inning? Yeah. You know, you know, you know, yeah, little things like that. You get caught up in the game in the little. So, but I was also the bench coach in Kansas City for Ned Yost and Trey Hillman, and Ned didn't want hardly anything at all. You know, I would just, I would just kind of watch the game. Get away. Yeah. So, so with Carlos, we're you know, uh, it's really going to come down to what he wants, um, and and I'll give that to him because you don't want to know you don't want a bench coach that's overbearing trying to you know hey you got to do this got to do that that drives. Because guys that are managers, they know what they're doing, right? Right. But there right. might be some little things that he wants me to do that'll that'll, that'll help out, and um, yeah. John, career looking back at your career, you were never afraid to to do the right thing, stick up for your players, or you know, I think one year you got thrown out like forty two times. Is that correct? <laughs> angry, angry, angry young man, Jay. I could, no, but but. Did you have kind of like a run in lack of it with, with Frank Thomas? You weren't afraid when he was the boy to call a man on something. And I think you may have quit the next day or something after he had no fight when he retired. <laughs> he, he, he he saw these, Jay. He, he took a look at these, man. He the, said, big, the big guns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but I mean, you're not afraid to. I'm not afraid. That's the right word. I mean, you were you had a job to do and you did it the way you wanted to do it. You know, right, right. Yeah, I mean, you know. Jay, you know what you're, you know, this is such a different day and age, you know, and the players make so much money and they got so much power and all that, but the manager still got to be the boss. He's got to be in charge. You got to keep, I think you got to keep that fine line, you know, that, Hey, you know, I still make decisions on your career. You know, I don't want to get too buddy, buddy. And there's, there's times everybody needs their ears pinned back every now and then, you know, we all, we all do like, Hey, whoa, you know, wake up, you know, this is a team game. It's not about one guy. But I will say you were talking. We talked about those ejections. That you know, one thing that you know, I, I learned as a player growing up and watching different managers. And, and if you want you, and I know if you want your players to fight for you, you better fight for them. You know, and no, right. nothing worse, nothing worse than having your manager sit there and won't won't argue with the umpires and to defend them when you then you look over the other dugout and their managers fighting for those guys. Players see that it's a, it's just kind of just the way it works. You know, you. If you want the best out of them and you want them to fight for you, man, you got to you got to fight for them. That's it's as simple as that. Yeah, HR, how much were you around Davey? Too? Did he have any influence, Davey Johnson? How much were you, any influence on you at all? Yeah, I really like Davey. You know, uh, you know, I was, you know, he was the only guy I ever played for in the big leagues. Uh, the thing about Davey, you know, he was very confident. He gave me my, my first opportunity too, so I, I never forget those things. But Davey was just so in tune, very smart guy, very uh, and very. He didn't talk to his players a whole lot necessarily, but especially the young ones. We communicated more through his, with his coaches, but he was very confident, and he and he believed in you, and he gave you opportunities, you know. And uh, uh, he, he stood by you. you know, to when push came to shove, he needed the players that were going to help him win, obviously. It's the way it is, but it, tremendous confidence, 
tremendous knowledge about of the game, and I love the way you know he handled the pitching staff. And yeah, so I, I took a lot from David. Yeah, John, you know, this year, next year, we're going to retire Doc Doc and Giles' number. What do you remember about being your teammates for a little bit? About you know what kind of players they turned into? Yeah, you know, you know, it's funny, Jay. With uh, I can remember when I first met Doc. Uh, you know, we were down staying at that Edgewater Beach Motel. Yes. Meyer League, right there on, right around the corner now from where you stay when you play the Tampa Bay Rays. Right. And, and, and we were, a few of us were standing outside our, uh, our little shacks, or whatever you call it, we stayed in. And all of a sudden, this car drives up, this souped up like a Camaro, beautiful car, right? And, and the license plate said Dr. K. And we all kind of looked at each other and go, who the hell is this guy, man? <laughs> <laughs> And a couple of days later, we saw him throwing in the bullpen. We go, oh, that's who Doctor yeah. K is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so that was my that was my first time I ever saw Doc. And of course, Daryl, when, when after I got drafted, I, they sent me to Kingsport, Tennessee, and that's also where they sent Daryl. Daryl signed about a month and a half after the draft. You remember that? So he comes to town, and his agent, I think it was Roger, yeah, Roger Youngwood, brought him to town. He had this big old press conference, right? It a crappy little Kingsport, Tennessee. And everybody's going, wow, you know. You remember, you know, they, uh, Frank Cashin called him the Black Ted Williams, you know. He was right. Yes, yeah, you know. Yeah. 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 And so and anyway, he, so with, with Daryl, you know, that so we played that year in Kingsport. I can remember the first game you played in Kingsport, Tennessee, a little small country town in Tennessee. There must have been about 100 media guys there, cameras and, and things. First, first at bat, he gets a base hit and drives in a run, you know. So that was – so you know, you could just watch this guy, right? But then we went to Instruction League, which is the, at the end of the season, everybody, they sent all their young guys to. And Daryl and I were roommates. For, it was a two-month league for the first month. And he went home. Something had, Somebody passed away in his family, so he, we went home. But, you know, those guys were always great to me, and, and I consider them good friends. And, and I think it's the best thing that can happen is to retire both those guys. And, you know, they, they both had tough roads, you know, in their life. You know, and, and what they bat, they battle things, but they're still two two wonderful human beings, and you know, it's it's. Uh, I'm just glad I'm going to be there now to watch it. Yeah, you know what? That's what the ownership is really embracing the past. John, we're able to go back and retire some numbers, and you know, we had an old timers game a couple of years ago. You know, and, and guys came back, haven't done it in 28 years. So Steve and his wife Alec are trying to embrace the history of it. You know. And that's what's good for me, for my, you know, because I switched jobs a couple of years ago just to do the alumni. But we're we're, we're going to settle in Long Island, John. What do you think you'll? Uh, is yep. City or- you know what? You know that one time I was up there for two months. I lived with Sid Fernandez out in Port Washington. Other, other than that, I was living at the team hotel right across from LaGuardia. Man, every morning you wake up to these jets taking off and going it's like chaos. You know. Yeah. So I'm not sure yet where I'm going to live, but uh, probably out on the island somewhere. Well, listen, it's an exciting time. I think, you know, Steve is committed to winning. He wants to do the right things. We will do the right things. And, and you know, as an old friend, I can't believe you're trying to say it's 20, 23, 43 years ago, we had that first conversation. That's crazy, That's isn't it? it? Oh, yeah, the first person I talked to. And, Jay, you know, everybody everybody knows Jay Hortz, right? And I, I tell you, you're not going to find a – and I'm going I'm to stroke you a little bit here. There's, no, there's one guy – well, I want to do it, man. It's your show. I'm going to do it. That you know, you're one person that took care of everybody, treated everybody like gold. Players loved you, everybody, and, and it, probably the MVP of that organization for I don't know how many years because you just well, got things done. And, and when you when well, you asked me on your show, I thought, what an honor. I still I still love what I'm doing, John. Listen, I really can't wait to see you again. A lot of a lot of good memories. And listen, will you have your movie? Can I play you in your movie? You know, Brad Pitt. You know, a little bit more handsome than me, but I it, mean. It, we'll, it, you might be a little too handsome to play me, though. No. Hey, Gibby, I'm thrilled that you're back, man. <laughs> we, we, we come full circle, which is great, man. It's it great. is, Jay. Hey, hey, pal, it's great seeing you. I appreciate you, everything you've done for me, and I look forward to seeing you as well.